later that late night, as Percy was beginning to collect his next train, he didn't realize that Ace was on one of his freight cars, but Percy was too tired to see. He saw that the other, other vehicles had went to sleep, and Harvey had went to sleep as well, pretend he's sleeping. What Percy also didn't know is that Max had been hiding behind a tower, Finally, now that that green caterpillar is gone, I can hijack one of these vehicles. Bertie was fast asleep, but he didn't realize that Max was inside of him. Bertie was breathless all over the yard. Percy was too tired to notice that Bertie was on the engine track. He was too tired. Ugh. He's probably being really useful. Yes, might. Really useful indeed. And he swinked to himself. While Percy was taking his load along the base, Harold the helicopter had been watching. I better warn someone about this. Harold flew to warn someone. However, when Harold flew to the yard, he could he could not believe his eyes. Bertie was sleep railing without noticing that he was nearly putting some vehicles off off the off the rails or road, I should say. Sorry for my error there. Bertie, Bertie, wake up! But Bertie didn't listen to Harold. However, he didn't realize he was being careless. One piece of the track fell off the rails, and the car fell into the grass. Brum, 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 brum. Bah, I landed in the sticky grass. My beautiful wheels are sticky and disgusting now. Ugh. But Bertie was too tired to listen. Max was still in his cab. Bertie did all sorts of ridiculous things. He even pushed another vehicle off. Max was still inside him, but Bertie did not notice. Ugh, must be really useful. Ugh. I must be, I must be, I must be. The sun started to rise, and Percy realized that he arrived a little late. Percy, you're a little late with your delivery. What took you so long? Sorry, I was just very tired. Then, Ace yawned. Ugh, I was tired too, Mike. Wait a minute, Ace! cried Percy. Ace raced past Percy. The workman was very cross. Be careful, you clumsy roadhog. You could have knocked me over or nearly injured me. He's always been reckless, ever since Thomas met him. Free, free, and easy for an easy mites. One, two, three, easy. <sighs> the sun rose for Thomas and the other engines too. Thomas was still sleeping until until a yellow blaze struck through. Then it struck again. But Thomas was too sleepy to notice. Then he realized, Ace. Um, hello, mites. For making all that noise. Oh, the indignity. Ah, oh, what's going on here? I'm trying to get some beauty sleep. No offense, Emily, no offense. <sighs> Man. Oh, hello, Mike. Wanna travel all around the world? No way, I wouldn't travel f you even after I got punished for going all around the world. Come on, it's free, free and easy, free and easy, one, two, three, CP. Enough! With that stupid song of yours, I'm going to get Annie and Clarabelle. I'm going to get my coaches. I'm going to go check out my forest. I'm going to do my own work, thank you very much. Hm. And I'm going to whoosh away without race cars like you getting in my way. Zinx raced away, 
He knocked Ace over. Whoa! Ow. Ace was lucky he wasn't damaged. <laughs> Later on, Emily pushed her coaches. Emily was a little bit complaining about shunting her own coaches, but she couldn't complain as bad as Gordon, Henry, and James did. However, when she uncoupled from her coaches, Emily could not believe her eyes. She was shocked about of the mess that had been made last night. Who did this? cried Bert, Emily. Well, Bertie did. But Max, the station master, was in my cab. Emily was so surprised. Oh no, she said. I better not work cabbish. Later on, as Percy had sent his to the train, Emily rushed into the yard. Percy! 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 Max made Percy cause a huge mess last night in the yard. Percy was surprised. And there's another thing. Ace was on your other freight car while you were still sleepy. Percy was very shocked. You mean... That yellow show-off was on one of my freight cars? Oh, no! Then Thomas came. Ugh. What's going on here? Thomas! Thomas! Max made Birdie cause a, 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 a huge mess to the last night in the yard. T Thomas was very surprised. T -t 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 Cinders and ashes! Who would do such a thing like that? Probably Max the Station Master. Well, I gotta be busy on my branch line like a really useful engine should be. Thomas raced into the yard. Bertie, I heard what Max did. You had? Yeah. And not only did he ruin Tidmouth's sheds, but he made you very, very careless. Wait, does anyone know where Harvey is? Because I'm sure he can clean up this mess. Someone help! Thomas could see Harvey and realized what Max had done. Max has done nothing but made us miserable for the past several weeks. I must stop him. But I don't know how. I'm just a small blue tank engine. But little engines can do big things, like I always said years ago. Is anyone going to get... Anything to get me back on the tracks? Oh. Yeah. Ah. Whoa, Harvey realized that a large machine was picking him up. Oof. And put him back on the tracks. Ooh, thank you. I am grateful. It's strange how this machine is operating without a driver to control it. Later that night, Thomas told his friends. So, Max c keeps thinking he can ruin our lives without thinking about the consequences. It's just absolutely disgraceful. First, we have to sleep in new sheds. Percy never stops talking about his mail drop to me in my shed. My paintwork gets ruined by the rain. A thunderstorm nearly made a branch hit my boiler. Look, I understand we are all upset about this, but complaining won't do any- Edward, I know you're trying to be kind and wise, but this Max has got to go. We cannot be sleeping in filthy old sheds that have nothing but terrible pain in us. Exactly. We've been sleeping in these sheds for the past week, and Sir Topham Hat hasn't done anything about it. I know, we should send Max packing and bash him on a freight car and dump him off a cliff. That might help our situation. Okay, no James, do you really really want to know what will happen if you do that? No, what? It'll be scrapped and we'll have no rut engine in our team. Exactly. Violence solves nothing. I hope you all don't think of that idea, especially you, Thomas. Yes, Edward. 
But what can we do? Ace won't stop bragging that he's free and easy. Did someone say free and easy, Mike? Oh, bother! Said Thomas. Shut up, narrator. You're making the situation worse. I'm free, free and easy. Oh, kick me in the a- Hello, blue tank engine. Do you and your friends want to go all around the world? Or you stuck with that slogan? We now know what you're up to, Ace. And we're not happy about it. Percy's right. We want Tidmouth Sheds back. Gordon and Henry were stern and strong. We also want to not be hurt by things like branches from being cracked by rain. Or getting dirty under a disgraceful core hopple, hop, hopper while trucks laugh while you get dirty. James agreed. And I don't want my paintwork dirty from your tricks. And Emily was stern as well. And I do not want Percy with his stupid mail talking and his stupid whistle in my shed. And then Thomas finally came. And for you to know, Ace, I do not want to keep hearing free and easy and this slogan of going all around the world. You and Max have caused trouble to me, my friends, and especially our home, Tidmouth Sheds. Well, might that's too bad, because I'll keep appearing in this series of however long the person keeps the model, this toy model on me forever. Free, free and easy. Good night, mites. I hope you're squeezy. Oof. And he's soon quickly away, leaving Thomas very sad. Emily felt sad for Thomas, and she felt horrible for Thomas as he went. Sadly to sleep. I wish I could make Thomas better. He's been sad ever since Max came back to Sodor. The other engines worried too.